everybody dr carlo oger with dr er.tv but if you're watching this video you are at edx video pro a channel specifically targeted at healthcare professionals or people interested in the medical profession who want to learn about medical cases and here's a nice one for you the 78 year old gentleman presented to the emergency department with a history of ogilvy syndrome which is a pseudo obstruction. They have chronic constipation, dilated loops of bowel, and a history of congestive heart failure, who presented with four days of abdominal pain, constipation, and abdominal distension with trouble breathing. Vital signs were significant with a very low blood pressure of 71 over 31, oxygen saturation of 90%, which is a low normal, and an abdominal exam that shows significantly tender, distended, and firm abdomen, that means hard. Portable radiographs were obtained, and we're gonna show those. And despite aggressive fluid resuscitation, he remained hypotensive, low blood pressure. The patient was taken for expedited CT scan. This is his x-ray, and you can see an enlarged heart, that's probably because of his history of uh, congestive heart failure, maybe some cephalization type, maybe early CHF type findings, really no pneumonia, no large effusion, uh, no collapsed lung like pneumothorax. So at least we rule out a couple things. And you can start seeing down here in the bowel that something doesn't look quite right. This is the ab abdominal x-ray and you can see the stool over here and over here. But what's most important, you see this here. This is the hostra or that lines uh, of mucosa that are very characteristic of the large bowel. So this is a significantly distended um, large bowel on this patient. Uh, much more than eight centimeters. I mean, it goes from up here in the um, thoracic all the way to lumbar spine. So very, very significant distension. CT scan is done. And you can see this here, this is all free air. And this is the abdominal contents, you got the liver, right kidney, left kidney, spleen, and bowel over here. And you can see that the air is so tight, it's, it's kind of like has a sharp line, it's pushing all the contents downwards, therefore causing some pressure type effect in the rest of his abdomen. So this patient has what is called a tension pneumoperitoneum. Um, pneumo means air in the peritoneum, that's the location. It is a rare condition, also uh, often resulting from iatrogenic complications. That means uh, medical related procedures like an endoscopy, putting a tube down the throat to the stomach, air insufflation of the gastric tract, uh, gastric rupture caused by CPR, or positive pressure ventilation like intubations or BiPAP, uh, with complicated pneumothorax, a collapsed lung, tracking of air in the subcutaneous tissue, then tracking through the mediastinum, the mid part of the chest, and then tracking all the way to the abdomen. Tension pneumoperitoneum is identified based on clinical findings of abdominal distension, which this patient had, persistent hemodynamic instability, and significant respiratory distress. In this case, despite the massive pneumoperitoneum, uh, on CT scan, no free air was identified on x-rays. That means that the air is inside the bowel wall, not externally. The emergency management of tension pneumoperitoneum involves needle decompression. When you insert an IV, for IV flus, you usually put a, a, a 20 or something, an 18 if you're really worried. 14 is for massive trauma type transfusion is very thick angiocatheter and you can put this either above or below the umbilicus the belly button if significant pneumoperitoneum is present a pigtail catheter which is a small but thick catheter uh, can be placed in left in place in the abdomen to continue drain this air definitive management depends on the underlying cause of the pneumoperitoneum Given the continued hypertension, the patient's low blood pressure and respiratory difficulty, this patient underwent needle decompression. So we put this needle in his abdomen and psh, all that air started coming out with transient improvement in hemodynamics and significantly improved work of breathing. After stabilization, surgical exploration identified a colonic perforation at the level of the spleen joint there, the splenic flexure. 
So in the show ER on NBC, uh, there was a episode where one of the surgeons, or I don't know if it was an ER attending or whatnot, had a patient who was uh, compromised hemodynamically. His abdomen was very distended, so he clinically made the diagnosis of a tension pneumoperitoneum, and bam, he put this needle right there, and psh, all that decompressed, and the patient did better, and it's pretty heroic kind of procedure because it's so immediate. And of course, once you put a needle, then you got to do an exploration because you just now m made a, a trauma and, and a hole into the patient's potentially the bowel. So, so you got to make sure you bring them surgery, make sure what happened, they have an obstruction or not, and then fix the, the hole you just put in. But it stabilized the patient, saved the patient's life. So tension pneumoperitoneum is the case of the day in a patient with underlying Ogilvy syndrome, which is pseudo obstruction of the bowel. I hope you're learning with this case series. I'm certainly learning plenty. These are not my cases. They're cases I find online, and I think they're highly valuable to discuss, things that I'm learning about by reviewing them. So I hope you guys are liking it, enjoying it, sharing it with others, please. And uh, let me know that you're out there. Bye-bye.